on World News Tonight. Crimea explosions. Another massive attack rocks a Russian military facility. Could Ukraine be behind it? Find out tonight. A big win. President Biden caps another win for Democrats, signing a sweeping climate, healthcare and tax bill. Climate catastrophe. After recent heat wave across France, flash floods hit Paris, inundating metro stations. And who let the dogs out? Papa owners bless their pets dressed in costumes on St. Roche Day. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. And we begin with the latest uproar between Russia and Ukraine. As Ukraine's government is hinting at involving in an explosion in Crimea in the second suspected Ukrainian attack on the peninsula in just over a week, Russia says that the massive explosions at the munitions depot in Moscow annex Crimea were caused by an act of sabotage. Footage of an electrical substation burning in Crimea may suggest that Ukraine's military has new abilities to strike deeper into Russian annexed territory, a development that could potentially change the dynamic of the war. Explosions hit a Russian ammunition depot near the site, which also prompted the evacuation of 2,000 civilians in a five-kilometer radius and disrupted rail lines. Also on Tuesday, a Russian newspaper reported seeing smoke rising from a Russian airbase in Crimea. There's no immediate claim of responsibility, although two members of the Ukrainian president's office hinted at the country's involvement on Twitter in what they called demilitarization, a mocking reference to a word Russia uses to justify its invasion. <laughs> the war is approaching the end of its sixth month. But until last week, the area appeared beyond the Ukrainian military's reach. That was when explosions hit another Russian airbase, destroying several planes. Russia has blamed Tuesday's explosion on sabotage, a rare admission that forces loyal to the Ukrainian government have hit its supply lines. Crimea, which was annexed by Moscow in 2014, is used by Russia to reinforce its troops fighting in other areas of the war. Russian authorities reported few wounded and no deaths in Tuesday's incident. At the White House, U.S. President Biden signed the landmark Inflation Reduction Act addressing health care, climate change and corporate taxes. The bill is aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions, lowering health care costs. And President Biden called it a bigger step forward on climate ever. Here you go. It's now law. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday signed into law a massive $430 billion climate, health care and tax bill, delivering on campaign promises to cut prescription drug costs and combat climate change. The Inflation Reduction Act invests $369 billion to take the most aggressive action ever, 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 ever in confronting the climate crisis and strengthening our, our economic, our energy security. It's a major legislative victory for the White House, and Democrats are hoping popular provisions in this bill will resonate with voters ahead of November's midterm elections. But they have a big problem. Millions of Americans haven't heard of it. Democrats and outside groups are desperate to change that. They're planning to spend millions of dollars in the coming weeks. Television, radio and internet ads, rallies and bus tours will target voters in swing districts. Some volunteers will knock on doors. Biden and his cabinet are set to make 35 trips to 23 states through the end of August to tell voters what they'd accomplished. With this law, the American people won and the special interests lost. But it's a heavy lift, with both polling and historical trends working against them. Midterm elections have long punished the president and party in power. Rising inflation has in the past amplified this trend, and inflation this year hit the highest rates in 40 years. Republicans told that Democrats' strategy is downright delusional, given Biden's poll numbers and the fact that the inflation bill is only expected to have a modest impact on prices in the near term. But Biden advisors are increasingly optimistic voters will punish Republicans for trying to thwart the Inflation Reduction Act for its health care and climate provisions. Every single Republican in Congress voted against this bill. Every single Republican in Congress voted against lowering prescription drug prices against lowering health care costs. 
an environmental advocacy group launched a $2.2 million ad campaign to thank Democratic supporters of the bill. A spokesperson for the group said ads in coming weeks will cast Republicans as pro-polluter. The uproar over the documents and the search sits at the eye of the legal storm raging all over Trump. Former U.S. President and some of his top associates find themselves under growing legal pressure as investigations mount. Tonight, the focus is intensifying on investigations swirling around former President Trump. In Washington, several are underway surrounding his finances, classified documents, and the January 6th attack. In New York, there are civil and criminal investigations into the former president's business dealings. And in Georgia, a special grand jury is looking into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Tomorrow in Atlanta, Rudy Giuliani is expected to testify. His lawyer telling he's now a target in that probe, and it's unlikely he'll answer questions about conversations with his former boss. Tonight, new details about former Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisselberg. He's expected to plead guilty in his tax evasion case and be sentenced to five months in jail. He's also expected to cooperate in the upcoming trial against the Trump Organization, but not with investigations involving the former president himself. Before taking office, Mr. Trump repeatedly called out Hillary Clinton for storing classified information on a private email server as Secretary of State. In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. As president, Mr. Trump signed a law stiffening penalties for the mishandling of classified documents, turning it from a misdemeanor into a felony. The scrutiny on Mr. Trump mounting as he weighs another run for the nation's highest office. Still in the U.S., there is a worsening mega drought in the western U.S. The federal government announced drastic water cuts in two states, but the pain is felt across the country. In the grips of a prolonged and historic drought, tonight the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation announcing unprecedented water cuts to states along the Colorado River, the lifeblood of the American West, serving some 40 million people. Facing a Tier 2 shortage for the first time in history, authorities say in January, Arizona will lose 21 percent of its yearly water allocation from the river as Nevada loses 8 percent. It's complex problems, not only in natural resources, but politically, economically, socially. Climate change has only intensified a 23-year mega drought in the now critically low water levels, snaking from the Rocky Mountains through the parched southwest. The river water sustains some of the largest cities in the country, but some 80 percent is used to grow produce that feeds the nation. We must be a, a conscious of the fact that we deal with finite resources and we need to to manage accordingly. Downriver Lake Powell and Lake Mead are just a quarter full. Hydropower production could soon be threatened. Hoping to avoid a catastrophic river collapse, Arizona and Nevada face a tightening tap, a crisis threatening to trickle down to more of the country. Torrential rainfall hit Paris after a recent heat wave across France, flooding metro stations in the French capital. Metro stations flood in just a matter of minutes, with water even reaching the platform at this stop. As torrents of rain gushing into this bus catch everyone on board by surprise. Though passengers on public transport at the time the heavens opened in Paris were the luckier and far drier ones. Those outside had to brave gusts of wind that reached 100 kilometers an hour on top of the Eiffel Tower, so strong that this roof nearly blew away. Soaked to the skin, pedestrians trudged along flooded pavements, while cyclists and vehicles travelled cautiously along roads transformed into rivers, dodging debris along the way. 49 millimetres of rain fell in just one hour, the equivalent of a month's rainfall. Some areas even saw hailstones. Authorities have warned that the south of France could be hit by storms later this week. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News tonight. Now, China has published footage of Pengu Islands, where a Taiwanese base is located trying to exaggerate their military presence in China. Taiwan has strongly accused this act as tensions soar between the two nations.
Taiwan accused China of exaggerating their claims about military drills on Tuesday, after the Chinese military published footage of drills near the Pengu Islands. Those islands are strategically located and home to a major Taiwanese airbase. And Taipei said it's not true Chinese forces had come close to them. China has carried out military exercises around the island this month, after a visit by U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi and five U.S. lawmakers, led by Senator Ed Markey, on Sunday and Monday. China responded to Pelosi's visit with test launches of ballistic missiles over Taipei for the first time. Beijing considers Taiwan its own territory and not a separate country. Taiwan's government disputes China's claim. The Chinese military released their alleged Pengu Islands video on Monday, apparently taken by the Chinese Air Force. However, Taiwan's Air Force Vice Chief of Staff for Operations, Tung Pei Lun, said this was Chinese information warfare, adding he had no comment on who had taken the video. Tung also said that Taiwan had a real-time grasp of what was going on in the skies and that Chinese aircraft had been closer to the north and southwest of Taiwan. Meanwhile, on Tuesday, China imposed sanctions on seven Taiwanese officials it accused of being independence diehards, drawing condemnation from the island. Kenya's veteran opposition leader Raila Odinga has urged his supporters to maintain peace as he rejected an election result, announcing amid chaotic scenes in favour of his rival, William Ruto. For the fourth time in a row, a contested presidential election in Kenya. According to official results from the country's electoral commission, the IEBC, longtime opposition leader Raila Odinga lost last Tuesday's contest to Deputy President William Ruto by 230,000 votes. Odinga, though, is accusing IEBC chairman Wakufa Chebukati of misconduct and says he'll be pursuing all constitutional and legal options to overturn that result. What we saw yesterday was a travesty and a blatant disregard of the Constitution and the laws of Kenya by Mr. Chebukati and the minority of IEBC commissioners. Indeed, four of the IEBC's seven commissioners have said they can't support the official results, citing an opaque counting process in which the total percentages for all candidates added up to more than 100%. Odinga had been favored to win, as it was he, and not Ruto, who had the backing of outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta. The latest election has so far been Kenya's most peaceful since its independence. By contrast, violence after Odinga's 2007 loss left more than 1,000 dead. In 2017, dozens were killed by police during post-election protests. In the run-up to Tuesday's vote, both candidates promised to handle any disputes in court and not in the streets, with ordinary Kenyans showing little appetite for the chaos of the past. Rather than fighting against each other or destroying our property, I think the best thing is to go to court so that the constitution should be followed. Odinga now has seven days to petition the Supreme Court. If it annuls the results, a new election must be held within 60 days. Bill Gates held a meeting with President Yoon suk Kyol and delivered a speech at Korea's National Assembly. The Microsoft co-founder acknowledged great strides South Korea has made and called on the country to become a leader in resolving health issues. President Yoon suk Kyol and Microsoft's co-founder Bill Gates on Tuesday sat down to discuss ways to strengthen ties between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in South Korea. After seeing how glad they both were to see each other in person following phone talks in June, Yoon said he hopes the COVID-19 vaccine developed by South Korea's SK Bioscience could be readily used to protect people in developing countries. To that, Gates talked about how excellent a partner SK has been in making the country's very first COVID-19 vaccine and added he expects further cooperation with the country. And so the growing partnership with South Korea, both as you grow your aid budget in a, a generous way, uh, but also as you're developing uh, through the universities and the nonprofits and the, uh, the companies here, you know, great new capabilities. Uh, it's a strong match with the, the goals of, of the Gates Foundation.
Meanwhile, earlier on the same day, Gates visited South Korea's National Assembly, his first visit there in nine years. There, he urged Seoul to take an active role in enhancing global health security after holding talks with Speaker Kim Jin-pyo for around 40 minutes. He complimented South Korea's work of transforming a post-war economy into a powerhouse in a very short time, now giving aid to other countries for them to go on the same journey of progress. While calling it fantastic how South Korea is taking part in implementing multilateral global health initiatives, such as its commitment in COVAX, Gates said the country is ready to be a leader in improving global health. Fans lined up outside the Graceland estate to honor the King of Rock to mark the 45th anniversary of Elvis Presley's death. One for the money, two for the show. Over the decades, some 20 million people have passed through Graceland's gates to pay tribute to the music legend Elvis Presley. It was his silky voice that took the airwaves of the 1950s by storm. Musical hit after musical hit, Elvis was a pioneer in bringing African-American music to the mainstream. It was his provocative dance moves depicted here in a recent biopic, Elvis, that made young women swoon and a conservative American cringe. And even today, across the globe, Elvis remains for many an enduring icon. Don't step on my blue sweet shoes. You can do anything you want, but don't step on my blue sweet shoes. On the cold and gray Chicago, there's a, there's a baby child is born in the ghetto, in the ghetto. Before becoming one of the most prominent cultural icons of the 20th century, Elvis Aaron Presley grew up poor in Tupelo, Mississippi. It's here that he was first influenced by rhythm and blues, gospel and country music. Melding these genres to create the unique sound of rock and roll, Elvis's career took off. Becoming America's heartthrob, he has since sold hundreds of millions of albums. From being drafted into the army in 1958, to his wedding, to his later performances in Las Vegas, Elvis Presley's stardom followed him everywhere. The end is near. So I face the With his early death at age 42, the king became a legend. I'll say it clear. Welcome back to World News Tonight. And for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Scotland has become the first country in the world to legislate free period products for women and girls in need. The products will be available in locations such as education settings, cafes and community facilities and an app can be used to be found in the nearest collection point. Australia's former Prime Minister Scott Morrison defended his decision to secretly appoint himself into five key ministries during the pandemic and said that he won't be resigning from federal parliament. Elon Musk, the world's richest person, tweeted that he was joking when he said that he was going to buy English soccer club Manchester United. Brazil's new superior electoral course president was sworn in. In a ceremony attended by the two leading presidential hopefuls, President Jair Bolsonaro and the Workers' Party candidate Lulu da Silva. During the first six months of this year, Samsung Electronics saw its share of the global smartphone market expand. It's the 11th year in a row that Samsung Electronics has ran the first in findings for the first half. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, we'll leave you tonight with leash dogs dressed in costumes and their humans gather to mark the day of St. Roche, patron saint of dogs. Stay safe and have a good night.